G'day! In today's video, I've got an Acer Nitro V15 with the model number ANV15-51-509. And this particular one, I'm going to open up and I'm going to take it the hard drive and format it and then put it back in. But while we're there, let's see what can be upgraded on this machine. As you see, we already have good breathability, which is something I'm very much a fan of on performance slash gaming laptops. If any of these screws are of different length, I'll let you know. But right now, they've all been the same length, which means when you go to put it back together, you don't have to worry about what screws go where. So far, screws locations are all extremely standard. Seen it standard for Acer and other brands. And the Zeus earlier, that was very similar to this. Granted, you can't really put screws here because there's a copper cooler there that we can see. So the cooling side of things is looking not bad. There we go, that looks to be all the screws out. Now if I use... I'll start off with the plastic pry tools to begin with to see if that will work. Yep, that's looking alright. There we go, it's lifting up very easily. There we go, we're in to the Acer Nitro V and I already see a couple of things I like about this one. First of all, one NVMe drive, two NVMe drive, a single slot of RAM in here, one vacant over here. To begin with, I'll take this off and I'll just want to disconnect the battery over here. And then once I disconnect the battery, I'll go through how to upgrade the NVMe or add another NVMe and also how to upgrade your RAM to dual channel mode which would net you some extra performance. Take this off here. What I should be able to do is get a nail in on both sides and just pull slightly like that. We're now disconnected. So now I'm happy to touch various components in here. If we go over to here, this is our NVMe drive which looks like someone has been in here before, which is exactly what the customer was saying. Being that it's a warranty sticker, and maybe even a sticker that says Lenovo. Take this out. Very odd. Typically they're not like this. So I'm, the customer was skeptical that the SSD may have been swapped in here, which I'm almost, thinking he might, as I've never really seen this particular cover over a drive. Granted, it may be something that Acer is now doing. With that Phillips screw out, what we should be able to do is put it in on an angle, push it forward, and then put that screw in. So if I line it up here, you can also do the same over here. Just need to make sure you remove the screw first, which is right there. But if I push this in, click, pull it down, and then we should be right to put the screw in right here. And that will hold it in. So we'll put the screw in now. There we go. Basically, when you add another SSD into here, you will need to go into disk management and format the drive from there. If you don't go into disk management after you put the drive in, the BIOS might see it, the UFEI might see it, but Windows won't know what to do with it. Once it's formatted, it will function. Go up to here. Well, as I say about this being covered, this is very covered the, pretty much the same way, so it probably is just fine, but it's very odd that that screw has been punctured. If I have a look here, they've also put a sticker over it. If I compare it with some DDR5 that I've got on the shelf just here, some crucial 16 gig, and uh, if I take off the sticker that's on here, or if I just tilt it slightly, I should be able to match it up. Nope. Yeah, we're just running a single stick of DDR5. So what you could potentially do is add another stick of probably 16 gig. I'm going to assume this is a 16 gig stick. It might be an eight, but I would assume it's 16. Should be able to add another stick in there. And I would expect to probably get about a 15, 10 to 15% 
performance increase in video games. And installation, even though I was butchering it, do take note of where this notch is. It's not reversible. That should be able to push in and pull down. Probably, yeah, go from each corner. So to remove, we pull these tabs outwards. It jumps up to put it in, slide it in, push it all the way, push down. Bingo, done. So while we're here, let's have a little bit more of a look. Copper going all the way around here. We have the Intel chip here, Schumler NVIDIA chip here, maybe a 40, 50, 30, 50, 40, 60. Probably wouldn't expect anything greater than that on this particular board. And where have we got? Power lead over here. So if you do damage your, your power port, if you do damage the port, the board will need to come out to actually be able to do anything to that. So the repairability of that's not as great. Same kind of cable. Here we have a little CMOS battery, which would be replaceable. Probably won't need to replace it for about five, 10 years. Here we have the battery. Only a 57 watt hour battery, or close to. 58 watt hour we've got here. Now, once you're done upgrading your NVMe or your RAM, would recommend to reconnect your battery once more, which if you line that up dead straight and just push it forward, or pull it forward, it should basically fit back in like so. That goes down, this goes down, and then from there, we right to put the bottom cover back on. And for the sake of appearance, this here is the bottom cover. Fairly brittle, fairly flimsy. Over a few years and a few drops, this is probably gonna shatter in the corners. These lug bits here will definitely break off. I will expect to see a fair few school computers in the future where these sections have all snapped off. Oh, window. There we go. And then from here, basically we should just be able to push down. Clip. There we go. Once that's all clicked into position like so, we should be right to put the screws back in once more. I find where I've put my screwdriver. Bingo. So these screws here are all gonna be of the same length. So we should be free just to put them back in, in their current locations. There's really nothing tricky about it, nothing special about it. That should be fine. Okay. Once you put all your screws back in, you should be right to go from there. Hope this video has helped, and I'll catch you guys in another one. I'm just gonna finish putting these screws back in, and then from there, reinstall Windows 11 on the NVMe drive, and away I will go. Bye.